house of the Lord tonight. We come expecting the Lord to do great things. Continue to pray for the bus. They're on their way. They should be here by about 7 o'clock. So they should be about an hour away. So just pray they don't run into any problems or anything like they did last year. Last year they ran into an accident and we got, it got late coming back. So let's just pray that they don't have any problems tonight and they all get here safely. I understand they've had a good trip. And so we're believing the Lord for great things for all them. Let us stand and invite the Lord's presence into the service tonight. Father God, we worship you, we praise you, we magnify you, we glorify you. We thank you again for the opportunity to come before your presence again, before your throne again. Lord, we pray that you be with a tough group. Father, youth group, Lord, as they're coming back on this bus, Lord, they're about an hour away. Father, Lord, we pray that you continue to keep your hand of God upon them, keep them safe. Let there be no problems or no difficulties, Lord. Bring them back safely, Lord. Father, Lord, we commend this service into your hands. We come tonight to worship you and to praise you, Lord. We pray that you bless every part of the service tonight. Just pour out your spirit among us in a mighty and a special way. And, Father God, we give you the thanks and the praise and the glory, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's open our books to page 251, and Roger's going to come and lead us in our worship today. We'll understand it better by and by. And it should be on the screen. <laughs> How about you? We'll understand it better by and by. Some things I sure don't understand. Amen. My. Here we're often tossed and driven on the restless sea of time. Rolling clouds and howling tempests off succeed a bright sunshine. In that land of perfect day, when the mist is rolled away, we will understand it better by and by. By and by, when the morning comes, all the saints of God are gathered home. We will tell the story how we overcome, and we'll understand it better by and by. Well, by and by, when the morning comes, all the saints of God are gathered home. We will tell the story how we overcome, and we'll understand it better by and by. Here we're often destitute of the things that life demands. Want of shelter and of food with hills and barren lands. But our trusting in the Lord and according to His word, we will understand it better by and by. Well, by and by, when the morning comes, all the saints are gone to gather home. We will tell the story how we overcome and we'll understand it better by and by. Trials hard on every hand and we cannot understand all the ways that God will lead us to that blessed promised land. But He'll guide us with His eye and we'll follow till we die and we'll understand it better by and by. Oh, by and by, when the morning comes, all the saints of God are gathered home. We will tell the story how we overcome, and we'll understand it better by and by. Oh, by and by, when the morning comes, all the saints of God are gathered home. We will tell the story how we overcome, and we'll understand it better by and by. Here temptation's hidden snare often takes us unaware, and our hearts are made to bleed by some thoughtless word or deed. And we wonder why the test when we try to do our best, but we'll understand it better by and by. Oh, by and by, when the morning comes, all the saints of God are gathered home. Tell the story how we overcome, 
And we'll understand it better by and by Oh, by and by When the morning comes All the saints are gone again at home We will tell the story How we overcome And we'll understand it better by and by Here temptation's hidden snare Often takes us unaware and our hearts are made to bleed by some thoughtless word or deed. And we wonder why the test when we try to do our best. But we'll understand it better by and by. Oh, by and by, when the morning comes, all the saints are gone together at home. We will tell the story how we overcome. And we'll understand it better by and by Oh, by and by When the morning comes All the saints are gone again and home We will tell the story How we overcome And we'll understand it better by and by Trials hard on every hand And we cannot understand all the ways that God will lead to that blessed promised land. But He'll guide us with His eye, and we'll follow till we die. And we'll understand it better by and by. Oh, by and by, when the morning comes, all oh, the saints are gone together at home. We will tell the story how we overcome. And we'll understand it better by singing one more time. Oh, by and by, when the morning comes, all the saints of God together at home, we will tell the story how we overcome. And we'll understand it better by and by. We'll understand it better by and by. As let's open our bulletins and just go through some announcements real fast. Amen. Don't forget Wednesday, uh, Wednesday night family meals. We're having the Salisbury steak this Wednesday. So you'll want to be here before service Wednesday night and believe in God for a good meal and a good service Wednesday night. Uh, there's praise team practice this Tuesday. Uh, at 6.30, so make sure the praise team is here for practice. Uh, plan your, make your plans to be with us for our Easter 2017 events. We've got some new things going on this year. We're going to do a good Friday service on Friday. Saturday's our Easter, Easter extravaganza, and Sunday we're going to do two services on Sunday morning. So Easter's going to be here pretty soon. And we're ordering pre-filled eggs this year. Last year, uh, me and Sister Pat and Sister Kara took us two days to fill up them eggs. And, and so this year, we're buying pre-filled eggs. So uh, if you want to give toward that, you can make a donation to it. But you don't have to worry about bringing candy this year. Do not forget, next weekend, this coming weekend, is our Lead Pastor Appreciation Weekend. On Saturday, we're having the sing with the uh, uh, shepherds. That'll be here Saturday night at 6 o'clock. And that's this Saturday. Do not forget that. And then Sunday morning will be our Lead Pastor Appreciation Day. Our guest speaker that day will be John Spratlin, Jr. So we're believing the Lord for great things that day. And please do not forget, this weekend is a weekend we used to do prime timers. But we're not doing it Saturday this time because of the leading priest, pastor, preaching day. Uh, sing. So on Friday night, we're going to meet at the catfish place in Apopka at 6 o'clock. So do not forget, prime timers is Friday night instead of Saturday night. We'll be at 6 o'clock at the catfish place there in Apopka. It's right downtown Apopka. So we'll plan on, if you're over 50, we'll plan on meeting there at 6 o'clock. Amen. Don't forget you, I love my t-shirts. We still have plenty of them in the back. 
If you would like to get them, you can see Sister Christy back there. Don't forget your seed for soul offering. Amen. If there's more events on the back at a glance, if you want to go through there and look at it, and you should have your calendar at home for all the other special events. Do not forget your uh, pray, invite, grow. Remember, we're supposed to be praying for uh, each row here. If your name is A through L, you pray for column one. J through R, you pray for column two. And if you're S through Z, uh, you pray for pro- column three. That's your pray part. And then your invite card is your little invite card. Remember to put your name on it and give it out to invite preach people to church. And then the G is for grow. Pray, invite, grow. That's our initiative this year. And it's called PIG. Pray, invite, grow. So we're believing the Lord to grow as God's going to do great things here. Amen. If our ushers are come, we'll get ready to receive our offering tonight. Don't forget on the back of this is also our projects we were doing. If you ever want to donate to any of these projects that's listed back here, uh, just put it on your check or on your envelope saying what it's for. If you want to help with any of this, we need your help. So if you want to give towards some of this, make sure you designate it so that we know where it goes tonight. Amen. Let us have a word of prayer and then our ushers will uh, start from the front and go to the back today father god we thank you again for the opportunity we have to give today lord as we bring your ties and our offering to you today lord as a people of god give i pray that you just give back and then press down shaken together that you supply every one of their needs tonight lord we pray that you bless them financially that you bless them spiritually that you bless them physically that you bless them in every area of their hearts and their lives today lord meet every need of the church tonight and supply every need in every situation in jesus name amen Amen. Well, it's wonderful to be in church through this evening. It seems like it's been a while <laughs> since we've been out for such a long time. And I tell you what, we got back from our honeymoon. It was we were going 90 miles and nothing. <laughs> it's time, like man, well that was heaven. <laughs> we need to schedule another one. <laughs> uh, and uh, I just uh, I'm thankful for uh, both of us are thankful for uh, God's uh, faithfulness. God's protection, because as many of you know, uh, last last week um, I was uh, merged on the A4, and I had someone who um, didn't see me in the lane, and uh, they swerved to my lane and hit me. And uh, so I'm thankful that God protected me, and that it turned out to be something, you know, much, I know I wasn't injured, 
just the vehicle was injured, but thankful for um, God helping us take care of all that, and uh, just thankful for Him being with us. You know, we don't always know what's going to happen tomorrow. And it, 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 amen. You don't know what could happen, uh, but God's always with you, uh, watching over, watching over you, and protecting you against all danger. Amen. Even when bad things do happen, we know that God's with us to help us get through that all the way. Amen. So just thankful for that. Um, our next uh, tonight for special music, we have uh, Brother Walcott. He's going to bless us with a wonderful selection tonight. We're looking forward to that. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen. amen. Usually I stand in the back and let my wife do the work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are uh, asking to pray for her. She's really sick. She um, seems like she caught some bug off the school bus. And uh, I just run away from it. Because I don't want to get sick. So I'm going to sing uh, one verse of this song for you. Uh, I'm sorry, Sister Wendy's just last moment. I was lost, but he knew where to find me. I was hungry, you were bread for my soul. I was thirst, and you gave me living water. Lord, you are my shelter. When I had no place to go Sometimes I just want to praise you Oh, sometimes just to speak your name Oh, sometimes I just want to thank you without asking you forgive anything oh sometimes I lift my hands to you oh sometimes all I do is just cry Oh, everything, everything I own, I own it to you. Lord, at Calvary, there's a reason why. Oh, sometimes I just want to praise you. Oh, sometimes just to speak your name oh sometimes i just want to thank you without asking you forgive anything oh sometimes i lift my hands to you Oh, sometimes all I do is just cry. Oh, everything, everything I own, I own it to you. Oh, at Calvary, there's a reason why. Amen. I forgot to do something this morning. Uh, yesterday was my dad's birthday, and I got to say happy birthday to my dad. Happy birthday, dad. I'm not going to tell how old he is, but I love my dad, and I just want to say happy birthday to my dad. Amen. I hope I have you many, many, many more years ahead, so you just keep on living. Keep on doing what you're doing. Okay? <laughs> Okay, we're glad tonight to have our associate pastor minister to us tonight, Pastor Renfro. We're going to go ahead and turn it over to him and let him come share what the Lord's put upon his heart tonight. So let's give Brother Renfro a hand as he comes tonight. I think he's going to sing for us too. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. I uh, had prepared for a message for a few days since the pastor asked me, knowing that he would be gone, and uh, and I so I didn't have it all prepared, and it's at home for a reason. In the, it was going to be entitled of Stop, Listen, Obey, and Provisions. Four points we was going to make. But Saturday, or excuse me, Friday morning, Friday night, Saturday morning, uh, that all changed about 2 o'clock in the morning. My wife was real sick. And as she was in the restroom and throwing up, I was, I have a lounge chair in my bedroom and I sleep in it about half the time. And hearing her being so sick, I sit there and begin to pray. Pray, pray. And she was having severe chest pains. Used to when she had them, we would think heart attack, heart attack. But she has another problem with her esophagus, and very severe. And she finally come back to bed. And as she laid there, and I stood by the bed, and my hand on her, and prayed for her, and stood there for some time. I don't know how long, just trying to get her help her to get her easy. And it seemed like the Lord just shared with me another way he wanted me to go, something very simple. But the scriptures that I was going to use in the beginning was in the 22nd chapter of, of uh, Genesis. Remember when the Lord spoke to Abraham and told him to take Isaac, his only son, and told him to go to Mount Moriah there and there to offer him. And that was some of the things I was going to share. But one thing that stood out to me was when they got there and uh, he put the wood upon Isaac and uh, he had the fire in his hand and he turned to him. He said, we're going to go yonder and worship. We're going over there to worship. What is worship? And that's what I want us to do. I, we, we've got plenty of time and I'm not going to speak long. But the whole purpose, I believe, for us coming together is joining our hearts, our spirits, our voices, for one purpose only is to worship, to acknowledge our Father, our Savior, and give honor to Him. My mind cannot comprehend how it's going to be when we get to heaven. And I see the 24 apostles and the folks around the throne worshiping. Praising God. And I, before I even get into what the Lord kind of changed my mind on and some scriptures after that, I, I still got all those notes. I, I saved this stuff in my computer and handwritten notes. I guess I'll get back to that later on. But something very simple. And I don't know how I'm going to share it, but before I do that, I want us to worship. Brother Walcox, would you come back? Can we sing that again? I think that's part of worship. That kind of touched my spirit. I didn't come here. I enjoy the clapping of our hands and all that. But I want us to get to the place that we can worship him. You know, the, 
I think it was one of the writers says to, uh, I believe it maybe it was in James. I, I my memory kind of is elusive a lot of times now, and older I'm getting. But uh, it says, "Draw nigh unto God, and He'll draw nigh to me." As I read many different in versions of the scriptures, I like to read in, uh, different versions and kind of, kind of. My baseline is always the King James. That's my baseline. That's where I got to judge everything by. But uh, my version of that is draw nigh to God. I remember an old time preacher, a friend of mine, he'd use that scripture and he says, Scrooch up to the Lord and he will scrooch up to you. Some of these young folks don't know what that scrooching up means. When I was 16 and 17 years old, I knew what it meant. I scrooched up to my girlfriend, got as close as I could to her, and I still do that. And she's still my girlfriend, sitting on the front row. Come and let's worship. I want us just to sit for a little bit and, as they sing, and I want us to kind of release our spirit and just worship Him, then I'll get into the Scriptures that the Lord has laid onto my heart and things to share. Let's worship Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you sing with me? And uh, uh, just before I sing, Pastor, I'm going to tell you how I come to know this song. My father-in-law, he, he, he didn't know Jesus. And uh, my wife has the CD, and one day they come from Canada to visit. And we were playing it in the house. And I saw him crying in a room by himself. And I went there, and I know he didn't know Jesus. And I, I was asking him what's wrong. And he said, all the problem, my son, this time just get to me. And now I know that there is a God. And from then, I start to practice to sing this song, and I find comfort in this song. Hallelujah. So I'm going to sing it, and I please sing it with me. I was lost, but he knew where to find me. I was hungry, you were bread for my soul. I was thirst. And you gave me living water. You're my shelter when I had no place to go. Sometimes I just want to praise you. Sometimes just to speak your name. Oh, sometimes I just want to thank you Without asking you forgive anything Oh, sometimes I lift my hands to you And sometimes all I do is just cry everything everything i owe i own it to you oh what calvary there's a reason why oh sometimes i just want to praise you Oh, sometimes just to speak your name. Oh, sometimes I just want to thank you. Without asking you forgive anything. Oh, sometimes I live my and to you oh sometimes all i do 
is just cry Oh, everything, everything I own, I owe it to you Oh, at Calvary, there's a reason why Oh, sometimes I just want to praise you Oh, sometimes just to speak your name Oh, sometimes I just want to thank you Without asking you forgive anything Oh, sometimes I lift my hands to you Oh, sometimes all I do is just cry Oh, everything, everything I own, I own it to you Oh, at Calvary there's a reason why Oh, I was lost, but he knew where to find me Oh, I was hungry You gave me bread for my soul Oh, I was thirst And you gave me living water Lord, you're my shelter When I had no place to go Oh, sometimes I just want to praise you. Oh, sometimes just to speak your name. Oh, sometimes I just want to thank you. Without asking you forgive anything oh sometimes i leave my hands to you oh sometimes all i do is just cry oh everything everything i owe i owed it to you Oh, at Calvary, there's a reason why. Just to worship him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Brother Carlton. Hallelujah. I remember when Elijah ran from Jezebel, wanted to hear from the Lord, but he wasn't in the earthquake and he wasn't in the mighty wind, but that still small voice. Sometimes we Needs need to stop. Sometimes we just need to stop and to listen and hear the whisper of the Lord. Just worship Him. Sometimes I want to. I, I've got to. I kind of easing back over for the, all those notes that I've got on my desk. And trying to, yeah, it was four points, and this one there's no point, no pizzazz. But I really kind of fussed with the Lord a little bit. Lord, you know I had this other prepared, and I've got trying to get it all together in my notes, and you put this other thing on my heart. If you have your Bibles, want to turn with me? I'm not going to ask you to stand. I have a lot of reading. The 13th chapter, that's the love chapter, as you know, 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter. 
the church at Corinth was a lot of trouble there, disputing, backbiting, all kind of things going on. Paul wrote this letter to them and to us today. I guess I have the title that I have put down here is to share, and I'm not going to speak long, but just love. The word love is found, and I, as I've done some research, 360 times in the scriptures in some form or another. These are my thoughts, and, and I thought about it is, could be one of the most misused words in the English language and most misunderstood word in the English language. It is used as a feel-in word, a byword of just that's what comes natural to say I love you. But the word love is truly an action word, not just a word to be spoken, but a word that when it is spoken should bring about some action. As the trouble was in the Corinthian church, Paul wrote these things in the 13th chapter, and I know it's very familiar this. Brandon, I don't know if y'all use these scriptures at your wedding, but I've got a wedding coming up uh, Friday night, my granddaughter, and I will use this love chapter in, in that wedding. And, and as Paul said, Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels, oh, if I have all knowledge and have not shared to your Love, I am becoming a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Though I have the gift of prophecy, I'm a spiritual person and understand all mystery. God showed me all this and have all knowledge and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and not have charity, I am nothing. Hear me, love is an action word. Charity suffereth long. Now, to think about that, I'll be honest with you. This wedding that's coming up for me is going to be one of the hardest ones that I have done. The older I get, I'm getting more tender hearted. <laughs> and it's my granddaughter. If I'm standing here and you're hearing me, I'm going to assure you one thing. I'm going to cry. Charity suffereth long. Love suffereth long. And is kind. Think about what he's saying to the church here. You're in, uh, there's all kind of confusion. There's, sin has entered into Corinthian church. There's bat biting coming in, but he says, It is kind. Charity uh, envious not. Charity vaunteth not of itself, and is not puffed up. Doeth not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own. I'm going to get back. It's not easily provoked, neither thinketh no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Love beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth. But whether there are be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But that which is perfect is come, then that which is 
in part shall be done away with. Paul went on and said, When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly. But then face to face, now I know in part. But sh then shall I know even as I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three. But the greatest of these is charity or love. As this was imparted to me, and how can I even begin to talk about this love that so many has preached about and so many theologians has researched and my little brain trying to comprehend this. And I begin to think about this, that the love word is an action word. Now I love all my girls, I've got three of them, and I married all three of them and cried at all three of them, and, uh, and I'll do all my grandkids as long as I live. I told them this is the last one, the last one that I'm going to marry. You find somebody else. Cause it's hard on me. They're rejoicing, and I'm crying. It's not fun, I'll tell you. But good thinking about love, it's easy. Uh, infatuation, the world looks at love differently than the Word of God looks at love. And it's today if, uh, it, 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 yes, we're in love, we'll fall in love, or whatever that means. And, and after a while, if we fall out of love, we'll go get someone else. But love is an action. Love works through issues. Now, do you think after 52 years, me and Sister Renfro haven't had words? We've had words. And I'm ashamed of some of this stuff. But love will cause you to work through some of the issues. And I was thinking about the other night as I stood by the bedside. I was so sleepy and standing there and having my hands on her side and praying, Lord, touch her, remove this pain. Stand there. Lord, you know how much I love her. And you have placed her in my life. Love is an action word. It's not just a word to say, I love you. And I know my, my middle daughter, she calls about uh, uh, around noon every day uh, from work. And uh, what are you doing? What do you think we're doing? We're in our easy chair talking to you. <laughs> That's what we do about that time. I, I do my half a day work, then I get in my chair. And uh, But when she hangs up, if she don't say it once, she'll say it five times. I love you. I love you. It got me thinking it's so easy for us to share that word, even among us brothers and sisters, to say I love you. But the word love is an action word, and I can prove it according to the Scriptures. A familiar passage of Scriptures that we all can quote. John 3.16 The beloved John wrote, he said, For God so loved the world. God loved. What did he do? What was the action between from the, uh, the, his love? The action was that he sent his only begotten son. I can just imagine up in glory after Adam and Eve fell and, and displeased and, and, and broke the covenant that God told them, do not eat from this tree. God turned, the Father turned to the Son, said, now, they broke our, our covenant that we had with them. What are we going to do? Now, this is my crazy mind thinking. The Holy Ghost said, I don't know, we, we've got to do something because we're going to have to cast them out of the garden. There's got to be something. Are we just going to eliminate them and start over? And I can just imagine the son said, oh no, Father. They're created in our image. 
and your breath. The Bible says, and God breathed into man and became a living. So your breath is in them. What are we going to do to redeem them? I can just see Jesus says, Father, send me. I will take on human flesh. I will go because I love our creation. I love what we have created. They had fallen short of our glory. But I will go and restore them. Love is more than just a four-letter word. Love is action as Jesus came to this earth. There's a lot of things that happens because of love. Turn with me to Acts, the 7th chapter, 58th verse. We see in this record of history, in the 7th chapter, as Stephen had been preaching about the Christ that they had crucified, preaching to them, telling them what they'd done, they crucified the Christ. And they got so angry. They sentenced Stephen to death by stoning. And what's so amazing to me. This got a hold of my heart. Another action because of love. In the 59th verse of the 7th chapter. And, St and they stoned Stephen. As he was calling on God and saying Lord Jesus receive my spirit then he knelt down and cried out a, a loud voice Lord do not charge them with this sin action did you hear me forgiveness you cannot have True godly love without forgiveness. Hello. Did you hear me? Well, they done it to me first. But you cannot have godly love without true forgiveness. I can just imagine Stephen there. Knowing that he preached the truth and told them what they'd done. You crucified the one. They so angry, so mad as the world. Jesus said, the world's going to hate you because they hated me first. Because of my word. But Stephen said, Father, do not charge them with this sin. In other words, what he's saying, I forgive them. I love them. Forgive them. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Did you see the action in love there? Stephen could have spoke up and says, I'm the innocent one. They're the guilty one. Lord, I was doing this for you. And look what they're doing. But he said, do not charge him, God. Just forgive them. And he fell asleep. What love that brings action. What kind of love do you have for one another? Not just speaking love, but action love. Again, in John the 15th chapter, another just a few things. And like I said, I don't have all these points like I had in the other ones. But I just want to share the love of God is more than just a feeling. But it'll bring action. It'll bring a response of some kind, somehow, to someone. John 15, verse 12. Jesus speaking said, this is my commandment. That you love one another as I have loved you. What action? Not a request.
Now, Sister Myra and I have a, a thing going that she's always on my case. And I'm always on her case. It's a lot of fun. When I, when I go down and see Sister Sasser, and, and uh, I, I, I tell Sister Sasser, I got to pray for your daughter. And she'll say, she needs it. I say, yeah, she's just a thorn in my flesh. Did you know Sister's birthday was today? I understand, 90 years old. We jest with one another. But it's got to be more. It's got to be a brotherly love to a sister's love. There's got, Jesus said, love one another as I have loved you. How did he love us? He went to the cross. There was some action. Church, I'm saying that we not only tell one another that we love one another, sometimes they need to be some action within that love I, I I'm trying to remember a story that I heard of, of a preacher that was preaching and and after preaching somebody came up and just admired his tie now I, I got where I don't wear ties too much if you've noticed in church I come a lot of time tireless because I only where I wear only reason I wear it is kind of cover this up you know now, it don't matter too much no more because, you know. But, but this preacher was preaching, and he blessed this man. And this man after church come up, and he said, just admired his tie. What a beautiful tie. And I enjoyed your message. And all that he said, I just, but your tie is so beautiful. I'm trying to remember who told me this or he done it. You know what he done? He just pulled off his tie and gave it to him. I'm not saying to pull off your tie or something, but that was love in action. And I believe God will speak to us hearts that we will say more. You know, the enemy wants to creep in and, and, and plant thoughts into our mind and, and make us think that, Wonder what they said about us or what's going on with their lives, what's happening here. Look what I don't think they like me too much. All these thoughts. But love will take action. Uh, love will cause us to move and to bless one another. And he said, Jesus said this in the thirteenth verse Greater love have no man in this than to lay down one's life for his friends. Now, the scripture goes on and says, yeah, you are my friends, I call you friends, but I want you to notice the action here. And it really got to me, if I truly have the love of God, and I'm not saying this will ever happen, but if I truly have the true love of God, I must have a willing spirit and mind to lay down my life for Ricky Faircloth. Did you follow me what I'm saying? That's what Jesus said. This is the action that it follows that no greater love than a man would have that he would lay down. I'm talking about his physical life. Do we have that type of love to lay down our life? Or someone else. In closing scripture. How is your love? First John. The blood brighter. John the third. Chapter. This is really. Really. Powerful scriptures here. Church, the enemy will try to creep in to the body of Christ here. He is our enemy. As he tried to cause division in the Corinth church, truly he will try to cause division 
among us today. But if we will follow the commandments and the example of Jesus on really what love is, is more than a word. It's action. The beloved writer says in the 16th verse, By this we know love, because he laid down his life for us. And we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. What I just said about me giving my life. We hear so so many times on the news and about someone needing a candy or needing something and somebody donate giving part of their body to extend another's life. That's action, that's love in action. But John says, and we also ought to lay down our lives for the brother. For whosoever has this world's goods, listen to the scripture, and sees his brother in need and shuts up his heart from him. I'm reading from the New King James. Do, how does the love of God abide in him? My little children, let us not love in word or in t tongue, but in deed and in truth. What powerful, powerful words from John. I want that to sink in really. All of this is love is action. Love will cause us to forgive as Stephen looked upon those that was killing him, stoning him. But the love caused him. The love of God caused him to say, God, hold this not to them. And John says, when we have all this, we see our brother in need. Should we not share with them, bless them? Love is, is more than a bad word. Love. Another scripture says love covers a multitude of sins. Sometimes it's not so easy to love other folks. But it is a command of the scriptures, command of Jesus that says, love one another as I love you. Give yourself to one another as I have given myself for you. I don't know why the Lord changed my four point message to just love I know my wife likes me to tell her more than I do that I love her I I know there's times that uh, she might not love me as much as she used to. <laughs> but I'm finding out through that love covers a multitude of mess ups. The enemy would want to separate us separate the church but if we would practice the love of forgiveness the love of helping and needing helping one another 
and more than just saying, I love you. And I guess we all familiar with this song. And in closing, I want to read the words that's in your hymnal. There's always been a great message to me. The love of God is greater far than tongue or pen can ever tell. It goes beyond the highest star and reaches to the lowest hell. And when I was thinking on these things several weeks ago, and I mentioned to the church that I, with this, uh, what's his name that killed uh, the police officer, uh, Keith Lloyd, did you realize that God's unlending love, he loves that man, even in his sin. Now, he will have to pay for and bring in judgment. I, I, I don't want you to misunderstand me. God would not be the God of this great love if he wasn't a God of justice. He would not be a God of this great love if he wasn't a God of of mercy and a God of judgment. As you study the scripture, especially Israel, and, and we see Israel as God's chosen people. And I, I, I think about in how Habakkuk, if you've read this book of Habakkuk, which I love that, that prophecy, when God and Habakkuk had a conversation. And Rebecca was telling God, why are you permitting all this to happen in Israel? All this sin and idolatry. Why are you permitting all this? And God says, I'm going to bring them into judgment. I'm going to let the Babylonians come in and bring judgment. Again, Habakkuk said, why would you do that, God? They're more sinful people than us here. Eventually... Habakkuk said, I'm going to get up in my high tower. I'm going to reposition myself and hear what God is saying. God is saying, I'm a God of love that I must bring judgment and mercy. We cannot have a God of love without a God of justice and a God of mercy. And he said, and it reaches to the lowest hell. Sister Wendy, would you come? The guilty pair bowed down with care. God gave his son to win. His erring child he reconciled and pardoned from his sin. Could with the ink the ocean fill and were the skies of parchment made were every stalk on earth a quill and every man a scribe by trade. To write the love of God above would drain the ocean dry, nor could the scroll, a scroll contain the whole, though stretched from sky to sky. O oh, love of God, how rich and pure, how measureless and strong, it shall forever endure the saints and angel song. If we are commanded to love, we are commanded to action. Did you hear me? I don't know if you got that, really understand that. If he has commanded us to love one another, he has commanded us to action. He has commanded us to forgive one another. He has commanded us 
as the preacher preached in the revival, to help. God is our present help. How does he help? Through you and I. Help one another. To encourage one another. I don't want to use the word I love you just as a byword. This has really got into my spirit. I don't want to just use it to fill in as somebody will use a curse word to fill in their language. I want to use the word love that God is love. That He did something. He didn't just say I love you. He didn't just say, I care about you. But he done something about that love. He sent Jesus, his only son, to rescue me and to rescue you. I know there's times, help me now. I know there's times, and my wife could tell you there's times it is hard. It is hard for her to love me. And some of you know what I'm talking about. Maybe something that I had said. Something I had done or something I had not done. But her love has been expressed to me for almost 52 years now because she's still with me. She could have left. She has expressed her love of staying whether for rich or for poor or sickness or in health. I pledge my love to you. That's what she done over 50, almost 52 years ago. She has taken action. Would you stand with me? I will challenge you this evening to take action. Not just to say, I love you, but what can I do to help you? And when the enemy comes in like a flood to try to separate us, the love of God is so rich and so strong that I will not, I will not let him separate me from my brothers and my sisters. I want us to call us just to come around into worship as sister. She plays his song, The Love of God. Just come around and worship God. And if the Lord moves on you to kind of hug somebody, the sisters hug the sisters and the brother, the brethren. Be careful what you say though. If you say I love you, I might need you. Would you just come around and let's worship? Come around and just worship. Lord, I worship you because I love you. Lord, I worship you. I worship you, Lord. I worship you. I love you, Lord. Lord, don't let me use a byword.
Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you. Thank you, Lord. I just gave you what I felt the Lord gave on my heart. No four points. But love is action. Love is action. <coughs> Hallelujah. Would you stand with us? Let's not forget the announcement Pastor Ricky mentioned. All that's going on, especially Saturday, midweek services, Sunday, our pastor appreciation. The pastor and his family bring a special offering. Just bless them and uh, do what we can for one another. Father, I'm so thankful for your grace. Father, how you love me through your son. And Jesus, your willingness to come, Lord, and free me from the bondage of sin that I was born in. Thank you for that. Lord, help me from this point on, not just to speak of love, but Lord, put love in action in all that I do, that it might glorify your kingdom and your name in the name of Jesus. Amen. Go with one another and God will go.